Hello all, this is the second video in step-by-step -step setup of Oracle 19C data card and in this particular video we will be seeing how to enable the data card broker and how to enable the fast start failover. So in the first video we have already seen how to create the primary database, how to create standby from primary, how to enable the MRP process. So all of that has already been covered in first video. In this second video we will be setting up the data card broker and enabling the fast start failover. So I'll just show you my configuration. So I'll connect to the primary uh, and I'll also connect to the standby. So I think I switched the connections. So that's fine. I'll take this particular query and I will show you uh, just one minute. So let's close this and I'll open another worksheet. Right click, open SQL. So this is DB1. This is the primary Aura P. Aura P on DB1. It's primary right now. And this is the Aura S on DB2, the second host, which is the physical standby. And the P is ready to switch over, which means the data guard is currently working. Now, the to set up the data guard broker, what we need to do is we need to uh, set the DG broker start to true on the primary and the standby. So this particular parameter we have to set on primary as well as standby. We have to configure the DG broker file. If we do not configure this, it will use the default file. We have to create the data card configuration and add the primary database. We have to add the standby in the data card configuration. We have to configure the static connect identifier parameter, which it uses in the switchover commands. Then we have to enable the configuration. And finally, once that this data card broker is set up, we will perform the switchover using the data card broker. So let's uh, get started so first thing that we need to do is i will use this particular script so first thing that i mentioned is we need to start the the digi broker start on both the nodes so let me minimize my screen and connect to the node one connect to the node two so i've connected to node one and node two so let me minimize maximize this maximize this connect sql plus set the aura aura in env to Aura, my database name is Aura, that's done SQL plus as sysdba sys and I'm going to set the DG broker on the primary. That's done. Again, on the second node, standby node, set the environment, connect to the database as SQL plus as sysdba and set the DG broker start. So I ran exactly same command on the first node and second node. If we don't do this, then the data guard broker we will not be able to add these databases into the data guard configuration. So we need to first start the DG broker. So that's done. So we can uh, we can we can we can exit from the primary. Then what we will do is I'll we to set the data guard broker. We will use DG MG RL. So let me connect to here and just show you the configuration. So show configuration commands shows if there is any configuration. And as you can see, Oracle Data Guard Broker configuration does not exist, which means there is no configuration as of now. We will you now we will be setting up the configuration. So you can see there is no configuration as of now. The, there is we need to set this particular parameter on the standby. No need to start uh, shut down and restart. So basically, this particular parameter allows us to add the standby in the at the standby in the data guard configuration so we need to set that particular parameter in the data guard uh, in the uh, on the standby so that's done now what we will be doing is we will be i have set up one script so let me go to that location cd data guard so i will we have to run this particular command so i'll show you the create configuration aura and primary database is aura p correct identifier is aura p then we will be adding the aura s as physical standby then i will show you the configuration then we will be setting the connect identifier for the primary database basically this is nothing but the tns names configuration such as port host service name so exactly same as in the tns name so we'll be setting the static identifier for the primary static identifier for the standby we will also set set the apply lag threshold and transport lag threshold to zero for the primary and standby. Then we will enable the configuration. Then we will show the configuration. So I will run all of these commands. Instead of running these particular commands manually, what I have done is I have created one script here. You can see setup data guard broker dot SQL. So this particular script I will be using. So if you see this particular, these are the exactly same command. Create configuration, add database, 
then show configuration, then edit the static connect identifier, edit the static connect identifier for primary, edit the static identifier for the standby, then set the apply lag threshold for primary, transport lag threshold for primary, same thing for standby, enable the configuration and show the configuration. So these are the steps that I will be doing for on the data guard broker. So instead of doing that manually, what I will do, so I will run this. If, if you can see show configuration shows that currently we do not have any configuration. So I'll run that this particular command all together. So let's see what happens. So you can see configuration aura created with primary database, then, you know, up everything. So for, for, the aura p is added aura s is added past that failover is disabled and configuration status all of these particular parameters are added and finally when you, it enabled the configuration and you can see the primary database it says the member was not enabled at and the, the it's uh, as of now the configuration status shows warning so let's give it a minute because uh, it it's going to take some time so let's give it a minute and wait for it to be enabled so this warning should go away and this should show success so let me run the show configuration command once again and you can see it it was in the warning now it is in the success so all that i did literally i just connected the dgmgrl sys password as sysdba so i connected to my session and i ran this particular script and this script is nothing but these commands which i added in this particular script so this particular First, we created the primary, we created the configuration, added the standby, then edited the static connect identifier for primary for the standby, set the leg threshold for apply and transport for the primary standby, enabled the configuration, showed the configuration. So as of now, I have done this. So right now you can see if I run this particular command show configuration on my data guard broker. So if I run this particular command on the data guard broker you should be able to see uh god okay. my system is behaving slightly nuts okay so aura p primary database aura s standby the configuration status is success now what i'm going to do you can see that aura p is primary aura s is standby s for standby p for primary same thing you can see here as well i'll run this the aura p is primary and aura p is primary and aura s is standby what i'm going to do is i'm going to say i'm going to say switch over to aura s so i'm going to make i'm going to make the aura s okay show configuration i'm going to make aura s as the primary so i'm going to run this command and it's going to take some time for this particular command to get effective so the switch over will happen so now what should happen is here this instance will restart as the primary so let's see sql plus as this dba and it's still up i do not know whether it has already started so let's see open more from v dollar database and it's in read write state which means it has already restarted and now it's bringing the aura p as the standby so once this particular command is done once this particular command is done the aura p is going to become standby and aura s is going to become the primary so let's wait so the you, uh, if you see the data guard broker is set up and we have done the switch over using the data guard broker so that's what we have done till now so let's give it a minute for it to impact so that's done switch over succeeded new primary is aura s aura s was standby new primary is aura s now if i say show configuration then we should be able to see aura s is primary and aura p is standby so i can run the same thing here so i'll sh the aura p will become the standby so yes aura p became the standby and aura s which was physical standby will become the primary so that's done so we have successfully configured the data guard broker. I will share this notepad with you. These commands will be shared in a YouTube link. So you can always copy paste them in the sequence. 
So that's done. Now what we are going to do is enable the fast start failover. So to set up the fast start failover, we have to set the log transport mode to sync on primary and standby. We will be setting the protection mode in the maximum availability mode. We will enable the configuration. We will enable the fast start failover and we will enable the observer. The reason why we need, if we don't uh, start the, we set the max availability, the mode in the max availability, then it won't be in a zero data loss mode. So we need to make sure that we are in a zero data loss mode. That's why we will be setting the production mode as the max availability. The advantage of fast start failover is that fast start failover, uh, if when you enable the fast start failover, then if for some reason the primary server, the data, the, the server where the primary database is hosted or the primary database server goes down, or the primary database goes down, somebody or the OS crashes, or anything that happens to the primary database, it will the standby is going to become automatically the new primary. The DBA manual intervention is not required, and you know the, the, it it does that. So the downtime that you would get if you do that, if you do not set up the fast start failover, that downtime will be eliminated by the fast start failover so it is a very good practice if you have a data guard broker make sure you have a fast start failover enabled for the critical databases so now let's let's uh, start with our fast start failover configuration so right now the data guard broker is working it's uh, so our aura s show configuration aura s is primary aura p is uh, standby so now what I'll do is to set up the fast start failover. I have already set up one script. Again, I will run that script instead of running this command manually. So these are the commands. So I'll show you in the VI so that you can look at this command. So edit, I'll be setting the log transport mode as sync for the primary log transport mode, sync for the standby, edit configuration, set production mode as maximality for zero data loss, enable the configuration, enable the fast start failover, show configuration and show fast start failover. So let's do that and connect connect to our DG MGRL. Copy the name of this particular script. I'm going to copy the name of this particular script. I'm going to say add and I'll paste the script. And then it's it's going to run those commands one by one. So done, done, done. Second thing, done, done. It's succeeded. Then enabled and the finally the it's okay. So we have got so let's see the fast start failover so previously the fast start failover was disabled and now we got enabled in zero data loss mode but we see that there is no observer right now the observer is not running so fast start failover is there the configuration is success however we do not have the observer so we need to also set the observer so i'm going to do that okay i'm going to start my observer and to start the observer i'll run this particular command i'll show you this particular command so what is command? So no hub dgmgrl sys password at or rp start observer. I'm starting the observer on node one, but in reality you should start the observer on one of the client machine so that if 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 for some reason the database server where the observer is running goes down, then your observer will no longer be running. So we should ideally set it up in a highly available client machine observer, which will be a third machine that is a uh, recommended practice rather than setting it on the primary and standby so i'm going to start the observer so i've done that so now if i say jobs you can see the observer is running now i'll clear my screen i'll go back to dgmgrl and now i will say show fast start failover so i'm going to see this and you can see observer is running on node one so we got observer also running now fine let's test the fast start failover to test the fast start failover what we are going to do is what is our primary currently our primary is aura s i'm going to kill the pmon process for aura s i'm going to kill the pmon process for aura s so i'll have to go to no node 2 so clear this is where our aura s is running show parameter name so I'm going to aura s is running here. This is our primary. As you can see, this is our primary. I can run this query here as well. Oh God, I did not copy the script. Okay, and I'm going to run that. And you can see the database role is primary for aura s. 
I'm going to do one simple thing. I'm going to kill the process, the or PMON process for this particular database, the RIS, which is our current primary, and we will see what impact this this have on our data guard configuration. So let's give it a minute and we will wait and we will see show configuration and you can see the RIS which is our primary database Oracle not available which means the database has gone down because we have terminated or killed the PMON process which means the standby the sorry the primary database Oracle not available the impact of that impact of that should have in such a way that RRP the current physical standby should become the primary so RRP should become the primary that should be the impact of this particular command so I'm going to wait for some time and I'll see whether you know so let's see okay so what I exactly happened is like we got an error immediate shutdown because we connected to the the we connected on node one which was RRP and that particular database is now in the shutdown which means the standby went down and it's now coming up back as the primary so once it comes back as primary then we should see we should see RRP RRP as the primary and RIS will be still be down so let me clear the screen let me take this particular command clear the screen I've already done that and show configuration and you can see RRP is now primary database and RIS is you know it needs to be reinstated it's actually shut down so it's and we got configuration status is warning so let's do that so let me try to connect to the standby the standby says it's not available the stat memory is not available which means it's not up and running which was old primary and let's try to connect to the the new primary this was RRP was standby so let's connect it and you can see that RRP is now primary. So that's done. We have successfully, the, not we, the fast start failover have successfully transferred, con converted the RRP from physical standby to primary. Now what I'm going to do is I'll go to the standby, set the environmental variable to aura, SQL plus as sysdba, and I'm going to start up my old primary this particular database will not get opened in the read write mode because it actually it will, it will try to open up in read write mode because it was old primary but it will fail because the already the failover has happened so this particular command the database will be mounted but it won't be open for read write so you can see it has not possible failover to another database prevents this database from being opened which means it is this this old primary now has to become the standby so we don't we can do one thing we can say reinstate RIS but actually what should happen is the fast start failover should automatically take care of it so let's give a try and re see here you see the message was standby database needs re to be reinstated now the message is reinstatement of database in progress which means once we restarted this particular database the reinstatement of that database is in progress so once that is done once that is done then we should see, see all of these warnings disappear and this finally this warning should turn into the success so let's give it a minute so the warning for the primary database is still there for the standby the reinstatement of database in progress that particular message is gone and multiple warnings in, so this let's give it a minute and we will see that even that particular messages should go away so status updated one zero so what i can do you know i can enable the configuration so that it refreshes it immediately and then I will see the show configuration and you can uh, unsynchronize fast start failover. That's also another warning. So it's doing a process in the background is checking whether all the archive blocks and all this stuff are shipped. So let's give it a minute and wait. And finally, that warning should also go away. Once that is done. So unsynchronize fast start failover configuration. Give it a minute. Uh, just few seconds and even that particular warning should go away.
So I'll, oh, while while it's doing that, what I will do is the this was our old primary. Now this should be standby. So let's connect to that, and you can see that has become the standby, and our aura P has become the primary. So we using the we using the fast start failover, automatic failover when we switched off the first we killed the process then automatically the from the aura as the p became primary and then we try to start it up it did not start it up then it's went into the went for the automatic reinstatement and then it did that so now let's see whether all those warnings are gone and everything and you can see all the warnings are gone it takes a bit of time but eventually it should catch up. So aura P primary, no warning at all. So here there was a warning. I have not done anything. You can actually check the clock. I have not stopped the video or something like that. You can, you can check the clock, the timings, and you can find out that this happened in few seconds. So now you can see I do not have any warning on the primary. I do not have any warning on the standby. The this particular wa was warning configuration status was warning, and now it is success. So. With this, we have successfully set up the data guard broker and the and the fast start failover. Again, this particular document will be uploaded, so you can always just copy and paste these particular documents in your environment, and they should work. Okay. In this, in, this was the second video in a in the data guard environment setup where. In the first video, we covered up how to set up the data guard. In the second video, we saw how to set up the broker and how to set up the fast start failover. So that's done. There will be a third video in this particular series where I will be adding the third standby to this particular environment. So I will add another standby, the third. So we will configure. It's not actually third standby. It's a second standby, third database in the configuration. So we will set up the multiple standby. So we will do that in the next video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial. I hope you like this video. If you have any comments, do pass in the comments in the comment section. And if you like my video, do like my video and please subscribe to my channel and see you in next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.